Thank you, Darlene. So okay. if you don't mind, I'd like to bring up uh, Isaac Jen Jenkins. Isaac, Thank are you here? Isaac is an employee here of the VA, also a veteran. So the congressman has something to say to you, Isaac. Yeah. Um, Gene, how are you? Okay. Look, it is so good to host this forum today. Thank you to our host, to Darlene and Peter. Thank you so much to the VA and the staff that uh, has joined us. Appreciate you uh, for the services that you provide and the, uh, the uh, open invitation to have veterans uh, utilize your services, but also for hosting us today. But this also being African American Month. Um, we wanted to make certain we recognize individuals of color who serve us in our military. And uh, God knows, they're a great percentage of the military force. And so it was suggested that we focus on Chief Isaac Jenkins. And he joined the Navy in 1993 as a uh, hospital foreman and attended boot camp in San Diego and uh, served 24 years supporting Marine Corps Infantry Battalions within the 1st and 2nd Marine Divisions and Naval Special Warfare, Group 2, SEAL Team 2. So great service, sir. Great courage and great patriotism expressed. Shared his medical and operational knowledge by instructing future medical providers at the Uniformed Services of the Health Sciences in Bethesda, Maryland. Additionally, he recruited medical professionals in the Southwest Virginia area, Virginia Tech specifically, to meet our nation's recruiting efforts. Chief Jenkins has deployed to Africa, the Caribbean, Europe, the Middle East with Kuwait, Iraq, and Afghanistan amongst them to fight the war on terror. And it's your force and your effort combined with those in the military as your, as your uh, colleagues that have saved this nation and have promoted and protected our freedoms uh, to the entire world. Upon retirement in 2017, the chief took some time off before joining the Veterans Administration in 2019 to serve our nation's veterans. He now works in the Learning and Development Department. And Chief Jenkins, it's our honor to present to you this American flag and uh, thank you for your service to the country and a certificate of it being flown over the nation's flag. Um, this opportunity and the presentation by Mr. Tonko, our director, uh, our social director Chino, Peter Potter, and illustrious Omni East Stratton staff that came in attendance. Uh, it is an honor. Uh, I'm just a recipient of, you know, my forefathers and foremothers that, that paved the way before I came along, so I'm just appreciative of the opportunities afforded to me. Um, Master Chief Diver Carl Brashear and just some numerous others, I can't name them all, but I'm just, I'm honored and I'm, I'm humbled by the opportunity. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Well, it's great to recognize an individual who not only served this nation so well on the uh, battlefield, but also now continuing his love for the veterans uh, through service at the VA. So again, good morning and thank you everyone for joining us. It's good to have you here today because this is about public information, public uh, awareness that uh, needs to be struck so that the work that's done to address our nation's veterans uh, is fully uh, notified to those who will be affected by it. So I uh, wish you all well as you uh, journey through the efforts to get services provided you. I want to start by thanking Darlene, certainly Darlene Delancey at the Albany Stratton Veteran Medical Center uh, for hosting us at this event again and uh, Peter Potter in a special way for having worked with us and putting this together um, so that we could walk to the details of the PACT Act. Let me also acknowledge a good friend and a hardworking assembly person. I served in the state assembly for 25 years. I know that Pat loves representing her 109th district. Thank you, Assemblywoman Fahey, for the work you do. Thank you for the work you do and for your support of our veterans. Most importantly, I want to thank all of our veterans for being here today. As a nation, we have an obligation, a deep obligation to support and prepare troops that we send into harm's way. 
and to properly care for them and their families when they have returned from that service. That's why I am indeed honored to be here today to share the new resources available to our veterans as part of the Honoring Our Promise to Address Comprehensive Toxics Act, or the acronym, the PACT Act. It was legislation that was signed into law this past August by President Biden. President Biden remarked that, and I quote, the PACT Act is the least we can do for the countless men and women who suffered toxic exposure while serving this country. I echo that sentiment, and it's why I work with so many in the House of Representatives. And to support this effort, we've been there for a number of issues and a number of bills that speak to the needs of our veterans. But in this case, I was proud to join with every one of the 222 Democrats in my caucus and a number, 256, that voted directly for this bill. It, uh, it was a pleasure to, uh, and an honor, to support the PACT Act. The PACT Act will ensure veterans living with the effects of uh, toxic exposure, including exposure to burn pits and Agent Orange, that they can access the care and benefits they deserve. I'm also proud that this legislation includes a provision. The PACT Act find a number of bills that were supported by myself and colleagues, some of us who had authored bills. And uh, it is a good package, I believe, that speaks to so many situations that were brought to the attention of the House. I'm proud that this legislation includes a provision from my Fort McClellan Health Registry Act, finally recognizing the lasting health impacts related to service at that base, something veterans across this district have been demanding for decades. The Fort McClellan Act, which I authored, came about because of citizen participation. Veterans who had served at Fort McClellan and believed they were exposed to carcinogens and toxic substances and that they indeed were impacted health-wise. Ultimately, the PACT Act is one of the largest benefit expansions in the VA's history. One of the largest, expanding care to generations of veterans exposed to toxic substances and their survivors. This law builds on previous legislation addressing toxic exposure like that that included the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act of 2019. That was brought to my attention several times as I would gather here at the VA or be out in the district visiting some of the veterans' posts. A major component of the PACT Act is helping more veterans into the VA healthcare system. It does this by expanding and extending eligibility and healthcare services for veterans who experience toxic exposure and veterans of the Vietnam, Gulf War, and post 9-11 eras. The PACT Act also codifies the VA's new procedure for establishing a presumption of toxic exposure and requires the VA to seek external input and review in this process. These critical changes will allow our VA to provide more veterans with access to the care that they truly need. The legislation also ended the requirement for veterans and their survivors to prove a service connection if they are indeed diagnosed with one of the listed conditions, including certain respiratory diseases and several forms of cancer. This change will help reduce paperwork, it will reduce appointments, and it will get rid of other barriers to accessing VA healthcare and compensation for our eligible veterans. To help better understand the impact of toxic exposure, the PACT Act requires the VA to conduct studies studies of veterans who served during the Gulf War and analyzed the health trends of post 9-11 veterans. In addition, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs will oversee a multi-agency effort to develop a strategy <coughs> for furthering toxic, toxic exposure research. These are significant steps in advancing our understanding of the health impacts of toxic exposure and establishing better support and care for our veterans. Ensuring veterans get the necessary care also includes making certain they are screened for toxic exposure and that VA staff have the appropriate training and indeed the education. So the PACT Act requires that veterans enrolled in VA healthcare will get regular screenings for toxic exposure related issues. This legislation also allocates critical resources to the VA to guarantee timely access to services and benefits for all eligible veterans. I hope each of you leave here today with a better understanding of how to access VA health care and benefits following this new expansion. My office is committed indeed to being a resource to veterans and their families who need assistance 
So please never hesitate, never hesitate to ask for guidance and assistance. I want to reaffirm my commitment to strengthening healthcare for our veterans and providing the full benefits, the full support, and the educational assistance we have promised the veterans, their service members, and their families. Our veterans have sacrificed so much for our country, and it is our duty to ensure that they receive the care and the support they deserve. The PACT Act is a significant step forward in fulfilling that promise, and I will continue to fight for our veterans every step of the way. In short, you as veterans who love this country, who have fought for this country, have earned these benefits, and you deserve these benefits, and we're making it happen. Now, before we introduce Peter Bottom, who is going to run through some of the guidelines of the PAT Act, uh, and again, thank you all for being here today, and thank you again, uh, Darlene, for all of the great leadership, and for to the staff that make it all happen here. But I see that Assemblywoman Fahey is here for us today, so Pat, if you'd like to share a few words, and uh, we'll move to Peter for his presentation. I will be very brief. Uh, thank you. I really am here to, one, because I jump at every opportunity to visit uh, our veterans and the Stratton Center, and to join in the accolades for Congressman Tonko, as well as our president, who made sure that this was passed. Uh, uh, PFAS, PFOAs, uh, as well as multiple, multiple toxins are a continual conversation in the Assembly and the Senate. I'm proud to have sponsored some legislation as, as the Congressman has also sponsored legislation. Uh, we're trying to move away from uh, the PFAS and PFOAs or the forever chemicals out of clothing. Uh, we've done it out of food packaging. We know not only what our vets have been exposed to, we know every day there, there is exposure because so many toxic chemicals have been become so prolific. Uh, we are spending billions to upgrade our water systems because we should be able to take it for granted when we turn on our faucets that our water is safe. And that unfortunately has not been the case in a few areas you've all heard of. Flint, Michigan, Hoosick Falls, we've had major problems down in Rockland County. Uh, so thanks again to the Congressman and to the President for their leadership on the spending and adding this money in, billions to upgrade our water infrastructure. We supplement that to the tune of hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars because it's so expensive, yet it's so imperative. So again, just to say thank you, I have an 11.30 in the chamber, you're gonna see me sneak right out, but I just didn't want to miss this opportunity. And it's mostly, uh, if we never hesitate on any opportunity to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your selfless service. Uh, as veterans and to the families who support our veterans. Uh, these are small measures to show uh, we value you, we support you, and always happy to join uh, uh, Congressman. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you. So, thank you, Assemblywoman Fahey, and uh, you know, it is about the fight. Uh, we need, you defended this nation and, and her government, and government needs to be sensitive to all of those needs that Pat just mentioned. Safe water, housing, education that's affordable, affordable, higher ed and the like. But today we're gonna to talk about the PACT Act, and Peter Potter is going to walk us through some of the key provisions and definitions of this new legislation, and just how the policies may uh, impact each of you. So, Peter Potter, you're on. <laughs> Well, I'm actually glad Assemblywoman Fahey left before I started talking. That would have given me a little bit of a complex. Uh, okay, let me fire up the old computer. So the PACT Act. This is a, a, a very uh, unique opportunity for VA. It's going to be, uh, as you've heard earlier, the largest, uh, since the Vietnam War, the largest opportunity for veterans to be able to enroll in the VA system. I am a veteran who gets his care here. Uh, I not only talk the talk as, as a public affairs person, but I walk that walk. I see all my doctors here. Uh, I actually love my doctors, and they've gotten me through a lot of tough times, and a lot of that can be attributed to the PACT Act. So this is very near and dear to my heart. Um, in fact, uh, I do want to compliment the Congressman. Uh, his, his recognition today 
of, of Isaac uh, is also very important because Isaac is, well, I say a younger veteran, not as young as some, but uh, you know, sometimes we think of our veterans and we think of our World War II and our World War I veterans and we forget that we have younger veterans. And uh, it's this age range. I mean, the PACT Act is affecting Vietnam era veterans all the way to today. And I think it's important because <clears throat> a lot of the folks, especially the newer vets, are just looking to come home and they're looking to get back to a normal life, something that's civilian, something that's not military. And we tend to forget the things that we may have been exposed to or even some of the issues that we may be having until it gets to the point that it's, it's maybe too late, maybe it's uh, getting to that point. And it's important that you establish your care. And you know, it's, it's very important because we don't have necessarily congressmen like uh, Congressman Taco that are watching out for veterans' interests. And uh, you know, it's, it's very important that we stay very close with our congressional members because through his work, we've ensured that things like the PACT Act uh, is a reality. So with that, I will uh, start our presentation. So today's town hall is to provide an overview of the PACT Act and how it expands and enhances VA healthcare and benefit eligibility for veterans. We'll review what it covers, including information such as definition of exposures, uh, eligibility changes, uh, screening, research, presumptives, and service connection changes. However, the most important thing to know is that every veteran already enrolled at VA will be screened. This is at any appointment you will come to the VA, you will be asked questions so we can start that screening process. We're also outreaching to veterans that aren't at VA yet and uh, you know, providing them that opportunity. But that is a very important piece of this. So if you are enrolled at VA, you will be receiving screening questions from your nurse and from your doctor. And then they will walk you through the process of putting in your claims. <clears throat> You'll notice we do have tables set up. We do have an enrollment table. If anybody here is a veteran who is not enrolled in VA care, I highly recommend it. Um, we also have our VBA and uh, our partners in crime, the VFW, uh, who have uh, uh, offices right in our facility. They can assist you with putting in claims and uh, comp and pen is a very important piece. And the thing about PAC Act is it also includes survivors. So, you know, sometimes as veterans, we think of ourselves and say, oh, we don't need that. We wanna save it for somebody else. It's not the case. This is looking out for the family, looking out for the members and their loved ones. <clears throat> so what is the PACT Act? PACT Act is a new law signed by the President on August 10th. It is one of the largest benefit expansions in VA's history, likely to impact several million veterans. The law expands benefits and care to generations of veterans exposed to toxic substances and their survivors. VA remains committed to ensuring all veterans and their family members receive the benefits and care they have earned and deserve. The new law includes the tools and resources to ensure VA can effectively implement it and meet the growing needs of veterans today and in the future. First, we'll review some of the terms you'll hear in describing veteran exposure. Military environmental exposure, it's a broad term that includes exposure to a wide variety of agents, including nuclear, biological, chemical, and physical. <coughs> and physical is kind of an odd thing to hear, but that includes things like sound, vibrations, noise, x-rays, uh, and that's all part of our military environment, both deployed and in garrison. Military environmental agents have the potential to cause adverse health effects, either alone or in combination. Toxic exposure refers to a subset of military environmental exposure. Being toxic, is determined by the substance, the concentration of exposure, the route of exposure, which could be inhalation, ingestion, transdermal, or intradermal, and intravenous, and the duration of exposure. The PACT Act defines the term toxic exposure, but as a general matter, there are several types of possible exposures of hazards veterans may have experienced during their military service. Some of the more common exposures include those to chemicals, air pollutants, as we've heard on the news, occupational hazards, radiation, and warfare agents. This new law addresses a range of issues impacting toxic exposed veterans, including access to benefits and health care provided by VA. VA will create a list of specific exposures, and those listed in the tables are some of the examples that may be included in that list. <clears throat> 
The PACT Act helps advance one of VA's top priorities, and that's getting more veterans into VA by expanding eligibility and available health care services for veterans exposed to toxic substances. Section 103 of the law requires VA to provide hospital care, medical services, and nursing home care for any illness to the three categories of veterans, as well as additional benefits. Category one are veterans who participated in toxic exposure risk activities while serving on active duty, active duty or training, or inactive duty training. Category two are veterans who were assigned to a duty station, including airspace above, Bahrain, Iraq, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, and the United Arab Emirates on or after uh, August 2nd, 1990, during active service, or the services were assigned to a duty station in Afghanistan, Djibouti, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Yemen, Uzbekistan, or any of the countries determined relevant by VA on or after September 11th, 2001, during active service. Now, these are a lot of names, a lot of places. Uh, what I urge veterans, uh, I could never keep track of this myself, um, <coughs> ask the VA. Get in touch with your representative uh, from the VA. Let them tell you uh, where you lie within this grouping. And then category three, veterans who are deployed in support of Operations Enduring Freedom Operations Freedom Sentinel, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation New Dawn, Operation Inherit Resolve, and Resolute Support Mission. Certainly if a veteran has an issue, they can always receive care from the VA as usual. There's a lot of specific dates and based on your individual services, we can help narrow it down for you to determine the category that best fits your service. We'll take a moment at this slide for you to see various discharge dates and eligibility categories. Again, the most important thing is to connect with VA and begin the process of enrolling if you haven't done so already. And you'll see there's various dates listed. Let VA walk you through that process. It's too easy to accidentally miss a date. From now, which actually is, began in October 1st uh, of 2022, through October of 2023, veterans who served on active duty in the theater of combat operations during a period of war after the Persian Gulf or in combat against a hostile force during a period of hostilities after November 11th of 1998 and who were discharged between September 11, 2001 and October 1, 2013 may receive care upon enrollment for VA healthcare. Enrollment is free, there are no annual costs, and your care may be free as well. Again, let us establish that service connection. What's important is the application for enrollment. VA will ascertain your deployments, service dates, and discharges, and provide, uh, that's all provided through your DD-214. That's the golden paper for veterans. <clears throat> the Fact Act also provides services at specific locations. For instance, veterans who served in the following locations and time periods are also eligible to enroll in VA healthcare, effective on uh, uh, of August of 2022. Uh, the Republic of Vietnam, uh, Thailand, Laos, certain provinces in Cambodia, Guam uh, or America Samoa and their territorial waters, and Johnston Atoll or the ship that called, uh, called there between January 1st, 1972. Again, this does affect veterans all the way back to the Vietnam era. Uh, we have a veteran who uh, uh, actually volunteers for us uh, to do some of this outreach. <clears throat> and he is Agent Orange connected. And hypertension is one of the preconditions. And now he's added hypertension to his service connection from the PACT Act. <clears throat> the PACT Act also establishes presumptions of service connected, uh, connecting more than 20 conditions related to toxic exposures. <clears throat> VA will contact veterans when a presumption of service connection is established or changed. You can learn more at the va.gov backslash PACT. If you ever want to see what's on the internet, they've got a lot of resources that we provide. Um, it's a great resource for the PACT Act. Uh, veterans who were previously denied a toxic exposure related claim are encouraged to file a supplemental claim using VA Form 20-0995. 
You can get that right back here with the VFW and with our uh, VBA, our benefits section. <clears throat> Most claims that were previously denied will not be automatically renewed under the PACT Act. So survivors who were previously denied dependency and indemnity compensation uh, related to any of the new presumptive conditions are likewise encouraged to refile that claim. Veterans who have not previously filed a claim and are diagnosed with one of the new presumptives um, and meet eligibility requirements should submit a new claim, uh, which again, you can get from the back um, for an application for disability compensation and related compensated benefits. And survivors who have not previously filed a claim and meet eligibility requirements should submit a new claim. Uh, application uh, for survivor pension and or accrual benefits. Veterans would be prepared to submit any supportive medical and lay evidence along with their claims. And of course, the DD-214. Separate from the PACT Act, uh, Dr. Kate Hendricks Thomas supporting expanded review of veterans in combat environments, otherwise known as the Service Act, uh, also expands toxic exposure eligibility for veterans who served overseas. Uh, that was signed into law June 7th of 2022. And the Service Act expands eligibility for clinically appropriate mammography screening for veterans uh, of any age who served in certain locations, not including bodies of water or airspace above. On this slide are locations and periods of service. Service Act does not change health care enrollment or claims benefits application requirements. <clears throat> Again, this is uh, a, an opportunity for VA to expand the services available to our women veterans. As of now, every enrolled veteran will receive an initial toxic exposure screening and a follow-up at least once every five years. Veterans not enrolled who meet eligibility requirements will have an opportunity to enroll, enroll and receive the screening. We do have enrollment tables uh, in the back uh, directly this way. <laughs> um, veterans will be asked questions about potential exposure to an open burn pit or other hazards commonly associated with military environmental exposure. And it's important to realize it's not just burn pits. We're talking about hazardous chemicals. And uh, you know, a lot of times we hear in the news all about the burn pits. Burn pits is a very, very small section of what PACT Act covers. So if you believe that you have any exposures to toxic chemicals, please bring that up with your doc. VA healthcare providers and claim processors will receive additional training and education on toxic related exposures. Details on the training for healthcare personnel are still in development. VA will also publish a list of resources for toxic exposed veterans and veterans who report toxic exposure. So like you, we're in the learning stages and, and VA is gonna to continue to be in that learning stage as we move forward in this process. And then we will provide to you every bit of information that we get so you can get the best care available. Another important role of PACT Act is that it strengthens VA's ongoing efforts to collaborate with our federal, uh, federal agencies through the creation of an interagency working group on toxic exposure research. <clears throat> the work group will be led by VA and comprised of DOD, Health and Human Services, Environmental Protection Agent, and other federal agencies. It will identify collaborative research activities and will develop a five-year strategic research plan. A congressman told you that a lot of, uh, in the PACT Act, there's a lot of research that's included. And some of that is the mortality of veterans who served in Southwest Asia during the Gulf War, uh, post 9-11 veterans health trends, uh, veteran cancer rates, uh, effects of toxic exposures on mental health outcomes, effect of waste related to the Manhattan Project, the state of access and barriers to benefits for veterans in US territories, and the effects of jet fuels. And anybody who worked, I worked on a ship that had JP5, JP8, very toxic fuels. Uh, it eat through your skin within 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I sat in it, I know. <laughs> Leaves a really big red spot. VA, which includes VHA and VBA, that's the VHA is the healthcare, VBA is the benefits, uh, continues to work to implement plans and will provide additional information as it becomes available. In the meantime, I encourage you and others to go to the VA's dedicated website. That's va.gov backslash PACT, P-A-C-T, to learn more. We will continue to do outreach to veterans and families for the next several years. 
Uh, of course, one of the most effective and strongest communication tools we have are veterans. So in closing, we ask that you help us spread the word. Tell your friends and family, uh, anyone you can, about the care and benefits available at VA and how important it is to enroll. Even if they've tried before or have, not, or have been denied, this is the perfect time to try again. Whether the addition of a new presumptive condition or change in eligibility, it's definitely <coughs> worth the effort. And I'll tell you, one of the biggest uh, responses that I hear for talking to veterans is, you know what, let's save it for a veteran who needs it more than I do. It's probably the most common response I get uh, from veterans. Um, you know what, uh, and, and, and apologies to anybody in the federal agencies, uh, government budgets don't work that way. Our budget is based on the care that we provide. So as a veteran, when you come to us to get care, we actually get funding to provide more care for more veterans. Whether that, we don't get raises, I mean, that's a static uh, thing. But what we do get is money to hire nurses, money to hire doctors, money to fund these programs, and it's very, very important. So whatever you can do to spread the word, uh, you'll always get somebody who's heard something bad about VA. I think that we're very lucky in this Albany catchment area. Uh, we go from Canada down to uh, uh, Kingston, and from the Massachusetts and Vermont borders all the way out to Utica. And I've heard rave reviews about the care that we provide. And speaking as a veteran, um, I do see some outside doctors, and that's what's great about VA. It allows you the ability to keep your outside doctors, and VA will actually coordinate the care that you receive. And because we're one giant healthcare system, your records are all kept in one spot, and they can track your healthcare needs in a much better way. So I urge you all to you know, think about that in, in your own enrollment, in your families, and in your friends, and, and invite them to, uh, to do. Is there any questions that um, I can provide answers to, or uh, any questions that you might have, even if it's not about the PACT Act? I have a technical question. Sure. Yeah, uh, will the PACT Act allow the veteran to request uh, an expanded blood panel for yeah, you know what, that'll be determined by your healthcare provider, and depending on what you present with, uh, our providers, and, and this is what makes VA uh, a tad better than going to the public, is uh, our doctors see these things on a regular basis. And uh, you know, there's a commonality amongst veterans, and there's an experience there. It's, it's like folks who uh, struggle with PTSD. I mean, you can go to an outside doctor that deals with PTSD, but what better place where you have a huge population that has experience with that. And our doctors are very much the same way. So they will uh, um, certainly have open ears if there is a test that you think is, well, is appropriate. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is, even if they're not presenting with symptoms, isn't it important to get a blood-based one? Yeah, they usually run, uh, and I'm talking from personal experience, not that I'm giving up HIPAA or patient uh, privacy. Uh, they run a lot of tests, including blood, and anything that could remotely be involved. So I, again, that's a conversation that you have with your provider. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? I'm a talker, so I can keep you up here for hours. <laughs> to ask my boss. <laughs> so, uh, you know, again, thank you for coming. Thank you for the Congressman for hosting this event. Um, he's been a very strong advocate for veterans and, and veteran care. And we appreciate everything that he does for us as VA and for our veteran population. And uh, Congressman, I'd like to turn it right back to you. Okay. Thank you for the summarization because there is a lot in this PACT Act. And if I could just repeat the advice shared by Peter, call your VA, work with your VA, and take your personal situation and work it through so that we're not skipping over um, an opportunity for you. Um, I do want to thank everybody for joining us today, the VA for hosting us, the VA for implementing this legislation, which is the awesome task and the uh, most meaningful task to make certain that the legislative intent is put into action. Um, let me thank Cora Schroeder and um, our team for uh, putting the event together today. We have Bianca and Zach that will be at our congressional table here for the New York 20th district. They'll stay to about two, I think, or until all the veterans uh, are still here. Um, so we thank them for that service and 
Monica from our crew also, who helped with the uh, event. But thank you one and all. Bill Frank, who uh, I see over in the, uh, at the uh, table for, is it for Schenectady or? Thank you for your service. I know that there are many veterans coordinators, uh, leaders who by county appointment uh, work in unison with the VA. So Frank, thank you for your devotion to the Schenectady County team uh, to make it all happen. So one and all, thank you, and uh, let's put this act into working order, and let's empower our veterans community. As I said, you've earned it, you deserve it, and God bless you, stay strong.